so uh, as of as of right now I think we have about 20 20 to 25 individuals here in the church uh, who are uh, uh, just hanging out staying warm um, and those range from um, a family with three little little kids all the way to we still have our uh, 92 year old uh, friend who uh, was is really in really in bad uh, bad shape um, I don't know his name his daughter's name is Judy uh, so we're gonna pray and, and you know you just you never know what what to expect things that I didn't anticipate ever seeing before um, we had three times last night at least three times um, ambulances went directly from the call to our church so you know, brought the patient you know obviously there weren't severe medical issues but brought the patients from the uh, from the place where the calls made straight to our church um, at about is crazy about 345 this morning um, an ambulance pulled up with his lights on and they they uh, they wheeled out a uh, this gentleman on a on a gurney and into the church as if this was a hospital <laughs> it was kind of bizarre in fact my wife was asleep in the front entrance and she said she woke up and saw the ambulance and saw them wheeling it <laughs> wheeling a gurney into the church building and she thought she was having a dream uh, but um, uh, but uh, anyway such is the nature of of the uh, whatever's going on these days it's uh, these are not normal circumstances in fact every ambulance driver said you know we don't normally do this I said yeah I know uh, but you know when people are in uh, in uh, survival mode dire circumstances but there's not a nothing a hospital can fix it's just a matter of trying to be warm um, they made the call on the fly and they adapted our first responders adapted and uh, so they and they brought them straight here and of course we yeah uh, we found a room our our uh, my Sunday school class is, uh has been his home for the last 24 hours now or not 24 close to it anyways pray for him um, yeah, we got a nice little, nice little family going on here. Um, there's a movie playing in the sanctuary. I think it's Ice Age. Nobody's watching it, but <laughs> it's kind of like being on a, being on a 747 overseas. You know, you're you, the movie is on, but nobody's really watching it. You're kind of eating your snacks and dozing in and out of sleep. But there's always a movie. That's kind of what it feels like if you go sit in the sanctuary right now. Is, um, but I, I gotta say that our church family really rose to the occasion today last night and today and uh, I think we're in pretty good shape um, uh, we have plenty of goods plenty of uh, food and bottled water um, in fact we were able to share um, a lot of uh, resources with uh, Eastfield uh, Eastfield has I think one family staying in their facilities right now uh, maybe more so uh, Pastor Andrew Mason was able to come and get some uh, get some uh, staples, and uh, so thank you for everybody who uh, who uh, provided that. And I think we're good to go through lunch tomorrow. We have a lot uh, a lot of good good things to eat, snack on. Like I said, right now our number is only around 20 to 25 people here. I think it's going to grow a little bit overnight. It might not grow as much as it did last night. So, but we're ready. Uh, we're ready. Um, a lot of our volunteers, we have, I think, um, at least four volunteers tonight who will be working uh, the GLOWS warming station at Salvation Army from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, so if um, after, uh, during that little span, if, if uh, we get overwhelmed, I may put out a post and ask for some people to come. I really don't think we'll we'll be overloaded, uh, so but just stay tuned to that. 
Um, I want to read some scripture. This is Acts chapter 2. The church, uh, the church that Jesus started, it wasn't, um, it wasn't new, but it was young. And they were learning how to do church together. And Jesus had left them, had ascended back to the Father. And of course, on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached and he, he preached the gospel. And many people came to faith in Jesus, hearing the gospel. Um, and so here, here you have this church with new believers, new baptisms, right? Um, new excitement for the kingdom. But they also had very, you know, just normal uh, needs of life. And I want to read Acts chapter 2, verse 42. This is just a little, a little snippet of what the church looked like in those early days. And I want to read this because as I read this, you... I don't know if everybody sees what I, I'm able to see. I hope you can, um, just from afar, Facebook posts. But um, as I read this, I, I want you to understand from, from my perspective, this is what I see, what, what I've seen in our church the last, uh, the last few days. Um, and I just think it's amazing. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the Bible says, uh, the, the, the new members of the church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. Teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers. They devoted themselves to that. So, that, I, again, I see, I see that in our church. Uh, verse 43 says, Awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as many as had need, or as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out. The church was just being the church. There's nothing, at the same time, there's everything supernatural about a church being the church. You know, you think about a person being born again of the Holy Spirit and baptized into a community of believers and functioning together as a church and the Holy Spirit just erupting in powerful demonstrations through his people. Everything supernatural about that. But at the same time, there's everything kind of mundane about a church being the church. It's, it's, the, it's the grunt work of just existing together you know it's a lot of it is not fancy things you know in this description they didn't have fog machines and and light shows and uh, amplified music you know and suits and ties you know uh, they didn't have any of those things it was just the church being the church in all of its grunge and glory um and that that's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing um, because you you shake away the glitz and the glamour um, and the kind of the uh, the the shine that is applied to modern churches and Christianity. And at the end of the day, we're just a group of people surviving through life by God's grace, um, sleeping on pews, 
you know, not taking showers. <laughs> Ooh, that's gross. Not taking showers. Um, uh, not, you know, uh, helping a helping a woman change her ninety-two-year-old dad's diapers in a Sunday school class. You know, um, helping bandage, find, you know, tracking down a first aid kit because somebody's toe is bleeding. You know, it just and. Or some a man's hands were just split open from the cold, you know. It just, it's just, it's survival. With, with God's, God's grace. It's so I'm, I don't know how to explain it. It's I'm having a difficult time with my words. It, it's something very simple, but it's also supernatural. Um, so. The, the that's what the church was doing. They were just they were just going through through life. Um, when somebody had a need, they they met the need. If somebody was hungry, they fed them. If if uh, if somebody needed money, they sold a piece of property and gave the money. It was it was the the necessary thing to do when you know people. Are going crazy about what New Liberty is doing, and I think rightfully so because it's what God is doing. But it's it's the responsible thing to do. Uh, for some reason, God chose to allow our facilities to remain powered through this whole thing. Any church that would not open its facilities to meet the needs of dying people while it has power and heat is a that would be a dereliction of duty it's a, so it's 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 a no-brainer it's easy right it's easy it's just elbow grease it's just doing what you have to do and this is what god's people have been doing the last couple of days i've been able to see it happen and it's very very encouraging uh, but just to let me cut to the chase i'm really kind of droning on <laughs> um the, the people attended together day by day. They broke bread in their homes. Again, nothing crazy is happening. They're just living, right? Um, but they received food with, with glad and generous hearts, praising God. And when they were distributing food to people who needed it, um, Luke recorded in verse 47 that they, the church had favor with all the people. And... You know, one of our one of our assistant chiefs stopped by the church today, and he just kind of kind of went on and on. And um, you know, people from outside are just saying, "Wow, this is it's so amazing what you guys are doing!" And like, we have favor from them. Like they they we're New Liberty has a I don't know a good reputation in their in their minds or their estimations. But this but what we're doing is not it's not it's not crazy. It's not anything that anybody else wouldn't do. Um, but when, but here's the, here's what happens. Um, when, when the Holy Spirit works through God's people to do what is right, to, um, to represent Christ well to the nations, then people recognize, Hey, there's, there's something there's something different about that. Um, it's it's wholesome. It it um, satisfies even an unbeliever's desire for a taste of the the glory of God. Um, th there's something amazing about that 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 when that happens. Um, the last part of verse 47 says the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So, so make um, make no mistake about this. This is there's a while, while we, we may not see it or acknowledge it or even follow it to its logical conclusion. God God has a um, an ulterior motive, if you want to call it that in in working uh, through his people. Um, the, 
these these people see. They see the they see the glory of God. They see us. Uh, and we we do our best to you know, do whatever we can do, um, but but they see something bigger. They see a bigger picture. Uh, God God uses this to to direct their attention upward, um, and that's the whole point. That's it. That's that's the whole point. That that God gets the glory and. Um, and his kingdom advances. And so everything that was done, everything that's been done, every loaf of bread that was donated, every Chick-fil-A sandwich that was purchased, every cupcake that was baked, whatever it is that you guys have done to assist, a bottle of water, um, praying, you know, praying for protection, um, paying, paying bills, you know, uh, whatever it is, it's it's for the glory of God, and God's getting all the God is getting all the glory in all of this, and that's that's why we're doing it. It's it's not a matter of if we should. Obviously, we should. It's a no brainer. This is who we are. <laughs> um, but when God's people are obedient to do what He tells us to do, then He can then he can shine. His spirit can work supernaturally in the mundane in ways that we can't even imagine and don't even observe. Uh, so that's my prayer that all of this is happening. And we, man, we, we, get, we get to enjoy the moment, you know, when you get to give a hug to somebody and you see the smile on their face or, um, you know, it, there's so many moments like that. I, I should have been walking around with a GoPro camera just to record it all. It's unbelievable. Um, so many moments like that. But and and it's satisfying to us because this is because this is our identity. We are the body of Christ. Um, when the body of Christ is functioning as it's supposed to, then we we everything is good even if we don't have any electricity or we can't take a bath for three weeks it's okay everything is good because we're able to function in alignment with our identity and um, but don't forget that even in the seemingly mundane tasks the small things that you and I get to do and even those who can't even you can't even get out of your house but you're praying or you're you're sending in an offering, or Venmoing, or something, or you're, or you're um, baking some, whatever it is, even the mundane things that seem mundane. God has reminded me that though there's there's nothing mundane when the body functions as the body is supposed to function. So uh, be encouraged. Keep keep it up. Man, I'm, I'm so encouraged. Um, so, um, stay encouraged. Keep keep uh, keep doing what God has told you to do. Uh, we're we're going to um, keep our doors open tonight. We have a couple of people here. And we, quite honestly, we can't remember how they got here, and we're not sure how they're going home. Uh, so, we're going to try to work that out. Um, like I said, we have one lady who was evacuated out of a nursing home in Dallas, and I don't know if she's keeping in touch with them to let her know. You know, we, we're not really sure about that. So, but as long as people need a place to stay warm, then we're just going to keep staying up here. All right. So keep praying, um, praying for that, praying for those who are who are here. Uh, there's a lot of just weary people. Um, we've got a, we've got a 92 year old man who's an Air Force veteran in the Air Force for 24 years. He's in our, he's in our lobby and just reading a book. He's been here since yesterday afternoon. A sweet man. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right. 
so pray for pray for them pray for each other I don't know I, I, I haven't been able to keep up with all of the things that are going on I know that my house doesn't have electricity but that's nothing new but apparently there's a water issue right now so um, we do have bottles of water here you guys brought bottles of water so if you need water uh, shoot me a note and we'll, we'll, we'll pick you up and or bring you some some water um, and that's about all I can think about right now um, pray for one another um, I, I did notice here and my wife told me that uh, Charity Lou Allen had a sledding accident and um, apparently it was really traumatic I don't know the details, um, but um, pray for the pray for Charity Llewellyn and the and, and uh, Dave and Chastity and Zach. Um, I don't I don't know everything that happened, but I know it's traumatic. So um, I, I think she's home. I think that's what my wife said. So uh, pray for them. Reach out to them and, and see how you can pray for them and assist them. Um, pray for each other. I got a phone call from a few church members who are still cold. Um, without power, some don't have water, um, so just keep uh, keep grinding on. <laughs> um, and if uh, if you need anything, reach out. Let me know. Uh, we we uh, Andy Limbers here. Um, he's been he's a good driver on this snow <laughs> and ice, so he can come pick you up uh, if you need a, if you need to come up to the church house to warm up for a little bit. Uh, somebody bought probably a thousand dollars worth of Chick-fil-A uh, I mean, so we've got some food up here and then of course a lot of church members came up here and cooked uh, cooked soup stews chilies um, so we, we thank you thank you thank you uh, it's it's gonna be used so there's no reason why anyone should go without um, food or water so we'll we'll do what we can okay um, I think that's all I have for now. Um, this is our prayer meeting, so <laughs> we're we're going to be behind on our Christian doctrine study. Ah, we'll have to make it up. Um, all right, uh, let's pray together, and then uh, I'll get off here. I'm going to go back to the lobby and see if there's anything that I missed. Um, and uh, and if we have a need, we'll we'll I'll let you know. I'll post it on Facebook and, and I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, otherwise, just keep keep praying. All right. Uh, let's pray together. Uh, so, Father, we're uh, we're grateful again. Uh, you've you've shown yourself to us in so many ways that that we just. Uh, we shouldn't be, um, but we're so overjoyed and um, thankful for your your kind compassion for us. Uh, God, I'm I'm guilty of uh, looking for the uh, the glory in the supernatural, miraculous displays. Um, but you've reminded me, Father, that you. You work best through the mundane, simple acts of Christian kindness. Um, so thank you for that reminder. Uh, thank you for empowering us, protecting us. Uh, we have a long road to go to get out of this mess, um, but we're so hopeful and so joyful because we know that you're going to be faithful no matter what. And that most importantly, your glory is going to shine brightly through your church. And uh, so, God, we ask that that's what you'll do. Uh, forgive us for times we've become impatient and wanted to complain about what we're going through. Uh, there are so many people who are hurting in so many uh, more desperate ways than we are right now. Um, and uh, So, God, let us uh, find uh, contentment as we become your hands and feet uh, and we pray that uh, you will bring glory to yourself through your church we lift up the requests that are on our hearts uh, obviously those without power those without water there's so many people who are scared right now and cold and 
not uh, uh, not sure of what the next few hours bring, much less the next day or two. So uh, I pray that you bring comfort. Uh, may your your people here in New Liberty and all across uh, the world, may your people be your hands and feet uh, to uh, to showcase your glory through uh, through simple acts of, of compassion. Uh, we lift up those who are hurting here in our, our building right now. Uh, they're in a weird place. They're in a strange place they've never been before. Um, so just comfort them and let them let them find healing and uh, restoration. Uh, be with our church family, uh, those who are um, uh, cold tonight and hungry or thirsty. God, uh, let us uh, care for one another. And uh, most of all, God, just help us to glorify you. Uh, we lift up Charity Lou Allen to you tonight. Uh, I'm not sure all that she's facing in recovery, uh, but God, we know that you can heal her and uh, bring her back to uh, a place where she's better than she was. Um, and so that's what we ask, God, through this experience that you will remind uh, uh, Dave and Chastity of your just overpowering uh, presence, and provide them comfort. And I know, I know they'll give you the glory and rejoice and so we thank you in advance for that. Uh, be with your church. Help us to be your people. Thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for us. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, it's time to go. Uh, stay tuned on Facebook. Um, if we have a need tonight, uh, I'll try to post it. I don't anticipate anything uh, out of the ordinary. But if it comes, and I'll let you know, okay? Pray for one another, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday morning. That would be awesome. And even if uh, you don't get to take a shower between now and Sunday, uh, come anyways. You know, it'll be a different day. <laughs> uh, but uh, can't wait to see you all again. All right, we'll see you later.